we assumed depreciation before impairment was 500. So our entry will have been to debit depreciation in PNL 500 credit accumulated depreciation 500. And then after impairment, let's assume the depreciation is now 450. Let's also assume that the asset has now After impairment, let's assume the impairment loss was 700. Now, let's assume also that the asset <coughs> has gained by 900. Entry will be the impairment loss was 700. So if the loss was 700, it means we debited P and L 700, we credited the asset 700. So we now have a gain of 900. So before we take the gain to revaluation reserve, we should reverse the loss of 700. Okay? But to reverse the loss to the extent that the 400 depreciation goes back to, to how much? To 500. So meaning, this asset has gained 900. We debit asset 900. Then we reverse the loss. The loss, which is 700, <coughs> we reverse only 650. So that the other 50 remains to join the 450 depreciation. So at 450 plus 50 goes back to 500. Then the excess will go to evaluation reserve. Is it clear? It's very important you remember this working. The examiner likes bringing it a lot. And it's one, it's one working which students tend to struggle with. They tend to forget that little bit about maintaining the depreciation as if the asset had never been impaired.
evaluation? No. We are reversing the loss, the 700. So the loss should be reversed to the extent that the depreciation remains as if it was not impaired. So the loss, instead of reversing the whole 700 loss, will only reverse 650. Because the loss and the depreciation, they are sitting on the same account, the P&L account. So the 50 will join the 450 depreciation under the P&L account to make it 500, which was the depreciation before the asset was impaired. Clear? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that concludes the recognition. We go to the disclosure. What do you disclose? You disclose the class of assets. For example, land and building should be disclosed separate. Machinery should be disclosed separate. Office equipment, if you've got motor vehicles as well, it should be disclosed separate. Then for each class of assets, you disclose the opening balance of that asset. You disclose any additions in the year you disclose any revaluation surpluses, any impairment losses, any disposals which has, have taken place in the year. You also disclose the depreciation and the closing balance together with the accumulated depreciation or impairment losses in the year. Any question? <coughs> 